Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this talk which is entitled A Completely Annotated Whole Slide Image Dataset of Canon Breast Cancer to Aid Human Breast Cancer Research. My name is Marc Oprewill and I'm from Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt and I'm presenting work today that we did at FAU in close collaboration with Robert Klopfleisch and Christoph Bertram from FU Berlin and with Tareen Donovan from Animal Medical Center, New York, United States. Now, before we start, let me quickly introduce to you what this is all about. If the malignancy of a tumor is to be investigated, the gold standard for this is histopathology, that is taking a thin slice of tissue, staining it and investigating it under the microscope. Tumor tissue consists of a large number of cells, but some of them are of particular interest. When the tissue was prepared and thus all cellular processes halted, some of the cells were just undergoing cell division. We call these cells mitotic figures. It is well known that the rate at which mitotic figures are present is related to tumor growth and thereby tumor malignancy. This explains why the count of mitotic figures per area is also a decisive factor in many grading schemes. So which problem did we try to solve here? The count of mitotic figures is notorious for having a high interrate variability, which has been shown in study after study. And if you base grading on a factor with known high error, as the mitotic count, you can expect that error to, at least in some cases, to propagate. And this is of course not in the interest of the patient and neither of the oncologist or pathologist. We believe that computer-aided methods can improve accuracy in this process by a lot. And if you, like me, have seen the enormous increase in detection accuracy that were possible by the introduction of large-scale datasets and deep learning, you could ask yourself what hinders us from transferring these methods to this task. And you might already know the answer, it is the non-availability of those large-scale datasets for this task. Now, we have quite some experience in creating large-scale histopathology datasets in our research group. One of our last datasets that we created was actually also a mitotic figure dataset on canine cutaneous mast cell tumor, where we found that applying deep learning to these really led to really nice performance in um, detection rates similarly to human expert performance. Um, and then one of the questions that we had in, in this field here in, in for this approach was, is it also possible to create a similarly high performant data set also for the domain of breast cancer? Of course, of canine breast cancer in this, this way. Now, if we had this data set and we were able to prove that it's also similarly high quality, the other question that we had is now, could we perhaps use that to apply it also on human breast cancer? And if not, then why? And well, this is what we set out to do in this paper. So we also aimed to answer the question, how large is actually the domain gap between human tissue and canine tissue? In this image, I want to show you what the main obstacles are towards creating a high quality mitotic figure data set. First off, let us assume that a first expert is looking at the slide and annotating objects that he perceives are mitotic figures. If we then ask a secondary expert, well, do you agree with that annotation? Then we get a confirmation bias, which is what we don't want to have. Next up, let's assume that we will have the first expert annotating the slide, but the first expert will not only annotate mitosis, but also similarly looking cells. In that case, we can class blind the annotation towards the second expert. That means that the second expert does not know if the annotated object was mitosis or non-mitosis. Now, what can happen in this case is that we get an expert disagreement, which is of course also a problem for our data set. Lastly, there might also be just plainly undetected events, so that the first expert, even though he screened the image maybe multiple times for those mitotic figures, will not or did not detect these events. To circumvent all of these problems, we used the following workflow. First of all, we had a manual annotation, 
where a pathology expert would screen the entire slide twice, followed by a blind evaluation of a second expert and a third expert in the case of disagreement. Second, we trained a network in a cross-validation manner in order to look for cells that were not yet detected by the first expert. Following that, we also had a manual review of the candidates found by the model. And lastly, we used a clustering approach in order to find possibly double faults detected or double faults classified cells, which we then also had a manual review later on afterwards with that. We carried out the manual annotation as described in the following. First, an expert screened all 21 whole cell images once for mitosis and similarly looking cells and then repeated the same thing another time. We then class blinded the labels so that the secondary expert would not be able to see if mitosis or non-mitosis was annotated. We then got a secondary label from the second expert. In case of disagreement, we found a third expert to also assess the cells. Next, we wanted to make sure that no mitotic figure was missed. For this, we trained an object detector in a cross-validation scheme to look for those cells. All previously known cells were rejected afterwards. Since we went for a very low detection threshold, we got vast amounts of cells, which is why we used a resonant-based cell classifier to pre-categorize the cells and speed up the following manual assessment. Finally, in an attempt to also find cells that were mistakenly wrongly classified by both experts, we used metric learning and clustering to visualize all cells in a two-dimensional plane. Following that, we had a reassessment by the first expert, the secondary expert, and in case of a disagreement, the third expert. Let me now come to the results of the technical validation. We trained two models with that, so a first stage model and a subsequent secondary stage to that first stage. And we found that all of the annotation steps that we did had a measurable and improving effect on the dataset quality. You can see that the maximum that we got was an average F1 score of 5 runs of 0.791. Next up, we wanted to answer the maybe even more relevant question if we could use our canine dataset to train models that could be used for the detection of mitosis in human breast cancer. And to that, the answer is actually, frankly, it depends. Because when we evaluated that, we fell kind of into a trap that we didn't expect. Turns out that the major domain shift that we can find was actually caused by the scanner and not so much by the species itself. If you compare now the two right-hand signed images here, you can see that those two were taken from the 2 x 16 dataset and the Amidas 13, which is a subpart of the 2 x 16 dataset. The only difference is the scanner that was used. In comparison, on the left-hand side, we have images taken from our dataset, and you see that there's a stark similarity between these images and the Amida 13 images. So we thought it might be a good idea to only evaluate only Amida 13 images. However, as it turns out, there's another shift between the datasets that we also need to discuss. And for that, we go back to our microscopy image. Here, as well, we could have an expert disagreement, which could be related to a different decision cut off by the experts. And secondly, we have just methodic figures that were missed in the Amida dataset due to a different annotation workflow. Luckily, we just re-annotated the entire 2 pack 16 methodic figure dataset using the same experts and the same methodology, so we can reduce these effects on our own annotation data. If we train a dual stage model on our dataset and run inference on the Amida 13 test set, we already achieve an F1 score of 0.628. By using model selection and adaptation of the detection threshold, we can increase that to 0.696 and using transfer learning with the Amida training set to 0.733. Let me now summarize. So yes, while there might still be a domain shift, we can say that it's most likely not major. The scanner domain shift, however, is really a major one. Now, if you're interested in tackling the scanner domain shift, please take part in the MeDoc challenge, which we hope will be accepted for this year's Mikai. Thanks for watching.